location today is New York and we're visiting KPMG, the global professional services company. We're discussing business enablement, which has been a key talking point in their annual survey of 1,200 CEOs worldwide. With me now is Greg Bell, co-leader on global cyber security at KPMG. Welcome to the business debate. Thank you. Glad to be here. So basic question first, you're going to talk about cybersecurity and also business enablement, which is maybe a phrase that not everyone has heard. So what does it mean and have you got an example? Sure, absolutely. When we think about business enablement, it's the fact that business needs to move fast. The world is moving at a different pace. Our consumers are expecting more out of who they buy products and goods from and services from. And we need to help them leverage new technologies, new approaches, and increase the confidence with the consumer so they can grow their revenue or increase their bottom line. And how we do that in the generic term is business enablement. It's about driving the growth factor as opposed to thinking about elements from a risk standpoint only. So you talk about risk, and CEOs used to see cyber as a risk issue, but you want them to see it as a business enabler. Why? It's because risk is, is pretty well understood, but risk is also internalized and unique to, to every organization, and risk will change over time. But we believe a good, solid cyber program can really help a company increase their top line and their bottom line. Innovation, leveraging new technologies faster. Does my cyber program allow me to use more mobile technology or collect more data from my customers? And do we have the ability to demonstrate confidence to those consumers and customers about how we're going to protect their data? And I think the pace of change is increasing at an element that, that many just don't fully understand today. And thinking about your recent survey of 1,200 CEOs worldwide, what are they now saying about how they feel about technology? I think there, there's a lot more confidence today than even there was last year about how they can make value out of new technology. And the fear of, of that new technology is waning quite a bit, which is very, very good. But it still needs to be understood that it's new and it has to be thought about how, what's the impact of this technology for good and for bad. So you have to think about how do we get the most value out of this without putting ourselves at risk or extending our brand too far that it could create a negative perception in the hands of our consumers. And all this data collection leads to customer insight, which is essential now to doing business, isn't it? It's the sort of gold dust or the lifeblood. But nearly half of CEOs that you surveyed said so they're not happy with that insight. So what can be done about that? Well, I think they need more. I think that's the, the issue. I think consumers are very willing in many cases to share more data with their companies as long as they know that data is going to be protected and they get something out of it. Maybe they get a loyalty card for a discount when they check out or maybe they collect points that can be redeemable for prizes or maybe it's a game they get to play where they try to compete with their friends for different benefits. So they're willing to give up some of that data but we need to make sure that we're protecting that data. And as we move more and more to financial data and health data and even personal preference data, that's very, very important. Even where I am physically, my location is data that I would be willing to give up if I get value for that. But if I don't, that could be used very negatively. And there are many new automation technologies on the market or entering the market. And so what does that digital labor force or bots, what does that mean for the future? Well, I think there's a couple different sides of bots. I think today when we think about digital labor bots at the very basic, it's taking a very rote process and being able to automate that. It is very data driven. But just as an example, I now instead of having a human being logging into two systems and moving data from A to B, I've got a process. It still needs an ID. It still has an activity. How do we protect that from a hacker, or a malicious user who may have that built-in password and may be able to leverage that? That's a risk we've got to protect against. But even if we think about a fast forward a few years when terms like artificial intelligence and cognitive and intelligent automation are going, those tools and solutions are powered by the data we feed them. And if we feed them purposely bad data, or we feed them incorrect data, they can make bad decisions. We've already seen that in limited areas and certain experiments very public where companies may have launched a chatbot as an experiment and the chatbot all of a sudden may stalk with a racist or a homophobic background. That's people purposefully feeding bad data to an example. So we're still in this nascent curve. We want to adopt the technology, but we want to adopt it with confidence and we want it to enable our business, not detract from our business because we're afraid of it. Really interesting stuff. Greg, thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank you.